Hello and welcome to Network. My name is Spumele Lezondi with your technology and social media news. Today I'm coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. If you want to be a part of our network, it's SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. News Network at sabc.co.za on email. This week, our Twitter poll is asking you which technologies you use when you are traveling. Results of that are coming up later in the program. Here's what's coming up tonight. Google has opened the Google Developers space. It's the first one and possibly will be the only one in Africa. It's here in Lagos in Nigeria. We look at some travel technologies that you could be possibly using. We also tell you about technologies that could be coming up this year. And our discussion is on a study that says that a lot of managers could be out of touch with technologies in future. Often developers from the African continent have a shortage of spaces where they can work and collaborate on various things. Well, Google has opened this particular Google developer space here in Lagos in Nigeria. They say it's the first one in Africa, but are not sure whether more will be opening in the rest of the African continent. It could just end up being the only one in Africa. Nigeria has a population of close to 200 million people. That's a lot of minds with many brilliant tech ideas. Sometimes there can be a shortage of spaces that one can go to find like-minded people that tech entrepreneurs can collaborate with. That's why Google says they've decided to open the first Google developer space in Lagos. Before we even opened this space, we had to look at the trends and we had to look at where there was really a need. And we found that, you know, we have a very strong and thriving developer and startup ecosystem in Nigeria. But there are a lot of limitations that they have in terms of infrastructure, in terms of access to, you know, a free space that they could come and have a hackathon or a code lab, you know, those kinds of events that they tend to need to do. They're restricted on, you know, expensive internet, they're restricted on, you know, access to the cost of the space, for example, could leave a lot of people out. So that's why we decided to come and have one in Lagos. The Google developer space is in the suburb of Ikoi. Nigeria's young population is already tech savvy. They shop on Jumia, save on Piggy Bank Nigeria and order their food on Go Food. This shows that tech is part of much of what they do. But it's not just the creative tech minds of Africa's biggest economy that Google says they hope will use their new facilities. They want to appeal to startups from all over Africa. The space is open to everyone. When I say everyone, it's open for the entire continent. However, it's located in Lagos strategically um, as one of the biggest and thriving communities for technology on the continent. However, we don't um, restrict it to other African countries. If you happen to have need for a space in Lagos or you happen to you know, have meetings, if you're affiliated with Google in any way, for example, if you're one of our alumni from the Launchpad program coming from Egypt into Lagos for a business meeting, you're free to have it here as well. The Nigerian government says the choice of Lagos for the first such space for Google will be great for the country's economy. So if there's an inflow of people into Nigeria, if they want to come, you, you know, it's, it translates to so many things. Actually, even tourism, even visiting, you know, more people come into Nigeria. So it it's translates into so many dynamics of the economy. For the last number of years, Google has been assisting startups from all over the continent with mentorship and funding. This is through the Launchpad Accelerator program. They say this is the continuation of that assistance. The first half of the commitment was to start the Launchpad Accelerator program, which supports over 60 startups across Africa with mentorship, with funding, with training and access to Google's technologies. And the second part, of that has already been fulfilled. We've started the program, it launched in March 2018. Now this is us fulfilling the second half of that commitment, which is to provide a space to house the program and to support the wider developer community across Africa. So, normally when you see one of these bicycles, there would be a treadmill at gym. McKenna here seems to think it is a treadmill at gym, but it's not. Sometimes you may find them as bicycles on the road. Here, they are alternative workspaces. You find them at the Google Developer Space, which has been designed by Space Finish 
a locally based company here in Lagos in Nigeria. The founder has a background in architecture, tech and interior design. What we do is we create spaces to uh, improve quality of life. Right, so we set up office spaces because we figured that you spend 80% of your time where? In the workspace. Google isn't sure whether similar spaces will open in other countries yet. They say that decision will be based on need. This sign gets you around when you are traveling. You probably recognize it from Google Maps. But there are a lot of technologies that we use when we are traveling. We asked some people about some of those technologies. To a large extent, most of the time when I travel, I, am in, I commute in a car. So I would say my biggest piece of technology would be the radio in the car. For specific reasons being one, listening to talk shows. Most of the time, that's what I listen to um, for purposes of information, obviously. But also if I'm considering long distance travel where I would consider probably, um, not consider, but uh, where it would be um, either flying or going, going internationally. So I would say my biggest piece of technology would be one, my phone and headphones. My name is Yost. My favorite piece of tech is my iPhone. Uh, I use it a lot when I'm traveling and I primarily use it to listen to music. So through my iPhone, I can stream music uh, through uh, the music streaming services like uh, Apple Music and Spotify. So it just has to be my iPhone. Uh, I'd have to say Spotify and earphones. It allows me to be in my own world. When you travel, people want to make small talk and sometimes it's irritating, you just want to be alone with your thoughts. And I happen to not like people at all. Whenever a new year starts, a lot of companies that do tech often show us their new products. Here's Sandy Lehlangani telling us about some of them. Samsung has officially launched three new smartphones. This includes two new additions to the Samsung A series and a light version of the Note 10. So the event was to actually, um, it's a Samsung event, to talk about our new innovations that we've launched, our A51 and A71, basically our A series, and also our vision for 2020. So really what we're saying today is that the fact that we've launched new handsets that are amazing, that are highly affordable, but very much high spec, with an awesome screen, a long-lasting battery, and an awesome camera. The company says Galaxy A series range has enjoyed a high level of success in South Africa with its connected ecosystem. A51, you get it at 3, $399, it's a 6999 uh, uh, handset. So it's really affordable, but it connects it to a big ecosystem. And that's what the feature is going to be. It's going to be about connected ecosystems, not just devices speaking by themselves. It's really going to be about connectivity. Those who attended the event say they loved what they have experienced. The most important thing is long-lasting battery life because I'm very busy and uh, most of uh, my work is on my phone. So if it switches off, then my office is closed. So that's the most important thing. And then the camera, you know, just to capture, you know, like a lot of my, my work is like social media based. So, you know, I always need a good camera to capture exactly what I see. Uh, the A70, say A70 or A51 is on fleek. The Samsung Galaxy A51 and A71 both feature an edge-to-edge -edge Infinity O display with Super AMOLED resolution. The display on the A51 measures at a size of 6.5 inches, while the A71 measures at 6.7 inches. Both phones feature four rear cameras with 48 megapixel and 64 megapixel with main cameras. The A51 will go on sale this week with a retail price of 6699 and the A71 will be available at the beginning of February at a price of 8999 It is SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. After the break, producer Lebusi Jagger chats about a new study that says in future managers will be out of touch. This is all because of technology.
Digital payments, like the transaction taking place behind me, are a new way people do business. Now, technologies develop very fast, and that means that the way people manage their businesses or manage their workforce needs to change. But a lot of managers struggle to deal with this change. Producer Lebusi Jake chats to Pritesh Suraj, who says that managers need to adapt to technology. Otherwise, a lot of managers, as a new report says, will be out of touch with how to manage in future, mostly because of technology. My observation on my travels, we work obviously with a lot of big uh, organizations around the world on these sort of digital transformation projects. My observation on my travel is that many, many leaders are just not in love with the underlying tech mm -hmm. to do this. And the analogy I have in my mind is it's like, would you imagine that a senior leader in an automobile company could be a senior leader if they didn't love cars? You may not need to know the technology, but you need to be at least turned on by it rather than turned off by it. How are you, Pritesh? Good, thanks for having me on. Great, thanks for, for coming on to the network. Now, as we saw in the previous insert, the guy was saying that leadership um, are sort of out of touch when it comes to the digital economy. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think to a certain degree, and if anyone says they're not out of touch to a certain degree, they're, they're lying because the reality is it's moving at such a rapid pace that no one can actually be completely in touch to the best level that it can be. Mm. So tell me something, how does it translate to South Africa and the, the business sector here? Yeah, I think one of the challenges is if you, if you look at like in the global space and developed economies, the, the digital space is being forced into them, so they're forced as part of their business processes. South Africa, we don't have the same level of pressure on us to actually transform as quickly. So our challenge is we're not transforming in line with the rest of the world and not really adopting new digital technologies to improve our businesses and improve the lives of our employees. So it says that less than 10% less than of the respondents that took part in the survey believe that um, their leaders are actually skilled when it comes to uh, digital ways. Um, yeah, I can understand why that number comes about. It's because when you actually look up to your leaders, you expect them to have the same level of understanding and various techniques that you would have. But the reality is what you're finding is that as we have an aging leadership challenge, uh, you're actually going to find that a lot of leaders just are not able to adapt and understand new technologies. Go, go to a leader and ask them why their staff are on TikTok and what TikTok is and why it's making an impact in the way that they market to their clients. And most leaders won't even understand that, which is at a very basic level. But won't you think like TikTok is more social media based? They're not really, I mean, I, I would think that a lot of uh, these leaders don't really concern themselves when it comes to social media. It, it is, but it's just an example of, of new and emerging uh, digital trends that are happening out there. And, and when you're in a world and in a space where your employees are engaging with, even on the social media platform, the different trends and different digital media techniques, they're expecting the rest of the business to have stronger, more corporate systems that are better than anything else that's out there. And, and, if, and if an average employee can have the best technology in their hand through a mobile device, why can't the organization that they work for have the best technology available in terms of communication, working with customers, and improving the relationships that they have uh, with key stakeholders? Not to be ageist or anything, but do you think that maybe uh the, the business sector needs more younger um, younger people in leadership roles. You're right, it, it shouldn't be about ageism. What it should be is about upskilling. If you're a leader of an organization, you need to look at yourself and ask those hard questions. Am I really upskilling myself in the latest technology and understanding the business systems that are available to improve my business? And if I don't understand that, how can I then expect to actually uh, disseminate that information in my organization or put the right strategies in place to actually go out and transform my business and that's the questions we should be asking. Is it a mere lip service or do you think that they actually uh, adapting into the, the, the things of um, the way things are done nowadays AI robotics are they really adapting or is it just them pushing for IR? I, yes, I think yeah, that's one of the challenges. What you'll find from a, from a government sector as well is that these, these are the narratives that are being pushed in terms uh, of you know, adopting AI, robotics, taking it all the way into school level. But the reality is the government, me government mechanism 
doesn't have the ability to adapt and incorporate these new technologies into it. So while you get that messaging from one sector, you may then engage with another sector of government and find that the systems are antiquated or are still running, um, you know, are still planning to actually move into new, newer, better systems, but it's not really happening fast enough. Thank you so much for joining us here on Network Pritesh. That was Pritesh Sivraj, incoming CEO of the Louis. It is SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Welcome back. We are in Lagos in Nigeria. Now here's what else took place in the rest of the world in the technology space. Building and piloting drones has been a lifelong ambition for Ethiopian engineer Lydia Elias. Now as a student at Africa's first drone academy, it's proof that dreams can take off. After me learning, I try to teach my people my... I also have an aerospace club, so I'm trying to transfer this knowledge to the uh, students that are payloads in my country. She and 25 others from across the African continent are the first bench attending the school. It's part of a scheme supported by the United Nations Children's Fund in which drones have been used to deliver medical suppliers. Over the 12-week course, students like Tanzanian Emmanuel Nashoa learn how to make and fly drones and analyze data. As drones become smaller, cheaper and more reliable, their role on the continent will likely increase. Children with some of the most severe forms of autism are benefiting from cutting-edge technology, including virtual reality and data mining. Our young people, they have very difficulties with sensory issues, so they can find it over overwhelming going to very busy places or transition to a new place. So they like what is familiar, what is they like their routine. So this the VR sets allow them to experience new realities and probably help them with transitions when they have to face a new place. The school cares for around 95 people at the severe end of autism spectrum, including many who are non-verbal and are unable to communicate their needs. The charity is also hoping big data can help. Dexter finds it very hard to, to process the world around him and when he's in VR it allows him to focus much more. He has. Um, a lot more concentration and less anxiety and he's, he enables him to experience things which would otherwise be very difficult for him to, to do uh, and it, it's a great tool for um, allowing him to, to focus and, and progress his learning. Diary entries are collected by staff and some of the children enjoy completing some of the 10,000 entries made every week. In an effort to preserve one of Earth's most significant spaces for human survival, a Tunisian startup has developed a smart device to help beekeepers track their hives and reduce losses. Farmers say theft, climate change and beehive collapse are among the most serious problems beekeepers face. بديت من لول ب 15 نبيت نحل خذيتهم وتعلمت فيهم خلال تجربتي هذه تعرضت برشا مشاكل من اهمها هي سرقه بيوت النحل والتغيرات المناخيه اللي ادت الى انهيار الخلايا بارتفاع وانخفاض درجات الحراره والرطوبه بشكل مفاجئ Equipped with sensors and transmitters the device alerts keepers through messages to their mobile phones Iris Technologies exports Smart B to a number of Arab countries, including Libya and Oman. Now, as I've been traveling, I realize that I struggle without my headphones because when I'm in busy spaces, I need to listen to music. So our Twitter poll this week is asking you, what technologies do you use apart from your cell phone when you are traveling? And that's it. That's all we have for you. Find us on SABC Network. 
on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's News Network at sabc.co.za on email. From me, Spumelo Lezondi, and the rest of the team right here in Lagos, Nigeria. Thank you very much for being a part of Fire Attack. Have a good one. Bye-bye.